I wrote the following poem for a friend I once had at um, a training group whose girlfriend uh, was expecting a kid. He wanted me to write a poem about pregnancy for her. I did so in a very subdued and symbolically obfuscated way. He thought the poem was lovely, but it never actually went to the person it was meant to go to because of the fact that he split up with her that same week. But if it wasn't for his request, I wouldn't have come up with a poem. So I have to be thankful for that. Uh, Melisma 1. Some are rare, the breath of a nymph upon a paper galleon. Sifting through the wall of water, crystals on the river's rills, reflections of the carriage wheel, the red crest of a high medallion, landing on the palace standing, watching from its sun-shotched sills. The prince sits in the hyacinth garden, hair adorned in lapai low, upon his skin of marble milk, his veins by amber garments, of a heart that lies asleep in soil borne by its own ornaments, its waves of silk in the midday breeze, its sway becomes a swallow. The lady wakes to sounds of laughter, glint of water on the rocks, the cherubs misting in the willows, plying past Viraria, to make love in an altered voices mating through a music box, the brooklet streams which dapple her, a sighing of La Nasita. Within her, in the bud she bears, she looks across the ocean wed, to where the woman barks its garnet, safely in a cradle boat, to that dream of a lighthouse rising, augur of a festal float, of roses but are always beside her, always near her in dread. A white star hangs in diamond aid, a crystal in a crimson tide, the image of the northern bear, its torch upon the rippled wake, of fairies in the midnight harbours, lakelet haze upon the break, to mirror the shining so outward, with an image shone inside. She walks and wanders dreamily against the hill of fallen straw, as from its bronze the waterfall upon her unheard footsteps, makes a prayer to the rain to send out on the August's fall, the embassage of lilac music sleeping stellared on the steps, that rose one day when mist lost way into the womb of lavender, upon the threshold of the ferns, which sway by day to follow her, across the palace gates where plays a confluence of light's rewards, a glaze as if the sun gave birth to crowds of burning hummingbirds. Perhaps a boy or girl will go off to watch the terrace here, the silver gauze of morns and promise float a golden gondolier upon the pond where drying leaves and ghosts of morning frost reclaim a sense of liquid living size beside the summer's host. The copper that the maiden wears at watch beside the wicker work of afternoons which serenade to temples and the open door soon marks the parish and its path all open on the perilled floor when bracken bursts with starling triumphs on the twilight briar's bark, the saffron lamps of midnight moths, the pupae on a cupid's limb, a waltz of snowdrops on the flow of floodlit milks in winter's city, summer rare, the pink of a nymph who fills the paper sales room, so it dwindled in her melting mesh to watch a true nativity. Two, transparencies the sky cast off faint harvest in her sighing, as the blue blood of a griffin sings amid its living pinions, of a scent beneath a brimming disc in silvering dominions, where a lost voice of a star descends a consonance of falling, in the lilt of newborn fragrant manes with gladied grasses calling, like an art-defying tapestry of new-made babes or stallions, making chase across the curtained glow of their galleons, I screwed the meter up in that line, and it's my own line. I'll read that line again. Making chase across the curtained glow of their galleons, tracing ripples through the flume that follows following. She walks across the dreamless beach with calm and blinking bay, 
where shadows keelly moving in the first hour have their mark, the beacon tower reaming where an astral flower came to stay, held deep a son or daughter in the fluid glow of inward dark, its song caught in the fall of water with one bird's reclining play, inside the ship her hand puts forward, dancing in a paper bark. Hmm. I need to add an accent above the A here. Hmm. I think overall this is quite a beautiful poem. Just the pity with Faber and Faber, Sarsenet, Blood Axe, and quite a few other um, edit uh, modern publishers um, who appear not to rec understand or recognise what proper poetry actually is, rejected this. I am the only poet currently uh, existent um, working in meter who is doing anything new. Even the collision here between the French symbolist tradition and the English romantic tradition which also has affiliations with essential free verse is something which has not been done before and this was done 14 years ago and I'm writing in a style that for me at least is now outdated, I'm now writing better poetry than this. It just goes to show you. My leftover scraps from history are far, far, far superior to every English language published poet currently existing at their very best. <laughs> 